Diego, Bedford Minor Hockey. They've got a full-time guy working with their Minor Hockey Association. Uh, guys making a, a lot of money, but the structure that they brought, the structure they have in Finland where everybody's working together, not to different goalie companies are working together to get more goalies better. Um, so it definitely starts with you guys on the ice, where you guys are bringing these guys uh, to make sure that it's all under one umbrella. I'll just start, uh, play a little video, uh, just to show you a little bit what I do uh, as my profession. With the Bathurst Titans, I'd like to tell you that we're 21 and 0, but we're not. Um, I was fortunate enough to have Sean Couturier as a shooter a couple weeks ago. Um, it's different at that level. I can tell you I'm learning a lot. Uh, being young, my first opportunity to be in the Quebec Major Junior, uh, it's a little different, uh, just on the professional side and, and feedback with 20 year olds, uh, dealing with guys that have been in the league for 20 years. But you can see the technique, uh, what they're able to do. Cool video here. You gotta make them feel good. <laughs> Big boy, 17 years old. Oh, jeez. 205 pounds. He lost a pound last week. So. <laughs> <laughs> He's, you know, we talk about upper body and things like that. But this guy is more of that. He's a bit loose. I wish I had Sean Maturi as a shooter every day. Oh, and I got one Anglophone and one Francophone, which is quite interesting. I go each other and don't know Great, just talk a little bit about myself. Uh, like I said, this year I've been fortunate to uh, get a position with the uh, Getty Badgers team now. I'm also in my third year at the University of Moncton uh, female program. Last year we were the AUS champions. I uh, went to the CIS. Uh, this year we're having a great year. We played last night in Mount May. Uh, I think if you can work with female programs, you can do anything after that, especially 20 year old females. Uh, two years with the Big Two County Crushers, I had uh, Brandon Thibault, who was a product of Brewery Minor Hockey uh, for two years. I was more on a consulting side, just trying to get my feet with at the junior level, uh, working with a little bit of goalies. I was also the manageable A team out of Moncton for about five years. I was with the DF Flyer before that. <coughs> and also this year I had a chance to work with Hockey New Brunswick. It was my first taste of uh, our excellence program in the province. With the under 14 program, uh, Brian McKenna was another really good product as a goaltender. What we're gonna do this year, uh, working with Paul, we talked about trying to get your goalies developed. Uh, I do clinics on a weekly basis in Moncton. I'm in Bucktouche, we're in Chidiac. Uh, tomorrow morning, I'm in Summerside BEI. We're just trying to give back to these goalies, trying to give them a little bit more time, right? If you're practice time, you have probably an hour. You, we're going to talk about what we can do to get, you know, allow them time to work. But I think goalie specific sessions are important. Uh, they're different individuals. They're completely uh, not what your players are right. And we'll talk a little bit of what we're going to do in our sessions. It's about getting them game ready. Uh, we have a lot of clients that are great in practice. Get into games, whoa, don't know where they are. They forget that it's a game, they still have to play hockey, it's not just going through a drill. Uh, so we'll talk about those things. We're really going to try to get your goals ready. Uh, fundamental skills. Even at the Quebec Major Junior League level, I have to do stick work almost every week. These guys forget. Okay, and it's, it's not complicated drills once we get up to the higher levels. It's not we're going to, you know, 
We're going to add nine movements and then three shots just because that guy's 20 years old. He's been playing his position for 10. Um, it's the fundamentals. You'll watch NHL camps if you have a chance. We'll talk about that. You go on YouTube, you check what these guys are doing. It's one push and a save. Everything is very basic. So don't think that overcomplicating things uh, will make a difference. Technical and tactical skills, I'd say how aggressive you are with your depth in the net. Shot preparation, are you square to the shooter? Uh, save selection, high shot, low shot, how do I differentiate? I'm just going over the points. We'll have a chance to talk about these things a little bit later <coughs> in the presentation, just to tell you what we'll be talking about on the ice if some of you are able to join us on the Friday. Post save sequence, how you read and react, control for save. Your rebound control, are you using your stick, using your pads, upper body. Feedback, which is huge. Um, I guess I'm just uh, give you guys a couple of pieces of paper there, Paul, if you want to hand them out to some other people. Who are in here. We'll talk about curriculum. Maybe we can discuss a little further what you guys can bring in your practices or what age category you guys are at. Uh, some of you are novice, some of you are peewee, some of you are any midget coaches here? Okay, not too bad. Uh, and technique, we'll talk about it. Butterfly style or safe selection, that's pretty much what we'll do uh, during our sessions uh, in Ruri. European influence. I was on the phone on Friday with a guy from Bedford who we we're going to join up with, uh, work a little bit. He goes to Finland quite often. I think uh, there's two big names in uh, Finland, there's Mr. Urpo. There's a great article, Bauer Hockey made a great article on this gentleman. He's about 70 years old, came to Canada about 25 years ago, stole everything we were doing here, brought it back there. He didn't change anything. Here in Canada, we've had <coughs> every hockey school you can imagine decide they're going to do their own thing a different way. I think that's one of the huge problems uh, that we face here. There's Thomas Magnuson and Urpo. I'm not even attempt to say that. What these guys have done, and it's huge in the NHL, is how many of these guys are coming out of Finland compared to our Canadians. Uh, Mika Kupersov, Perry Lettinen, Nicholas Backstrom, Pekka Rene, Andy Niemi, and Koskala, I only saw one thing in there. <laughs> Tuka Rask, uh, and even more, we had Tommy Salo back in the day, like, I wish it was a little bit clearer for you, Anders Lindback, there is a lot of these Finn goalies. We're talking about a place that has you know, per capita, per goalie, per team is, is quite the ratio compared to Canada. It's, it's amazingly small. But what these guys do is use their gloves and they're excellent skaters. Excellent skaters. I think that's a huge part. If you can stop the puck, you have to get in position to make your save. <coughs> Sorry about that. What I'm going to do, me and Louie, a few years ago, we put this video together just on YouTube, just to talk. Just to, and you're going to hear Louie talk a little bit just on the basic fundamentals. We're gonna talk about T-Bush, then we'll have a group discussion afterwards on a couple of these, where your questions are specific to uh, the age categories. So hopefully we can hear Louie here, but a uh, pretty good video we put together. And you'll see everything, it's very simple. And actually the drills on the back of your sheet are some of them that we've uh, taken and we've done them with Andre. He was a former goalie with the University of Moncton. Great internet connection here too. This doesn't work for us. So. so basic sense, right? The big thing with us is that you can see your gloves. Okay? Goaltenders need to be able to make those saves in front of them instead of looking behind them. Okay? So if you have a goalie that's like this all the time, feel the elbows to your gloves. Okay? That's the basic sense. You see from the small levels to the older levels. Sticks are always out. Even in their butterfly, the whole body follows. Now this was done about three years ago. We started to defer a little bit from where your gloves are always down, that's more of a blocking position. We're keeping the gloves a little bit more active now. If it's a low shot, that's a safe selection. Oh, low shot, I can close it in. Oh, I'm not sure where the puck is. Keep my gloves active, I'm able to make that save. And you can see where the stick is. Always in front, allows Andre to make control. If you've got a goalie that's got everything inside, it's just not gonna work for I'll give you
you guys the link for this video after, or you can view. It's just to watch a guy play in the university level, uh, the differences, and with the younger goalie, what we're able to do. And we'll talk about rotation and things like that. Movement drills, very important. I talked about skating. I went to the Prince Edward Island. We started doing programs there, and I went, whoa. Everybody stops pucks there. They, they get in position. They are excellent skaters, excellent. Their goalies are not kids that cannot move in the net. They're just unbelievable skaters, and they do this stuff religiously. Um, and that's what you're going to see on Friday. We will be doing a lot of skating. I'm going to Summerside tomorrow morning. I'm not even bringing out any shooters for an hour and a half. It's just skating a little bit of puck end. We'll be doing some of this stuff. It's just footwork. I do this with my goalies at the Quebec Major Junior level every week. About a half an hour of skating. You see Andre's upper body doesn't move. And that's going back to what we talked about, it's just the gloves being out. Good look, rotation and pushing, and we'll talk about that a little further. <coughs> and you see that these are simple. You don't need to have the crease area. Okay, maybe your coach decided to make a warm up. Um, that didn't need the goal is you can find a part of the ice. You can make a straight line and a couple of movements. It's just for them to get get that feel, get skating. <coughs> Force their wrists a little bit. You want them to be able to make those stick saves to control their rebounds, get them handling pucks. Either one hand with the younger kids in the novice level, the older guys, two hands. My biggest thing is them to get their elbows up. You see a guy who's trying to handle out like this, get the elbow up. And move your feet, move your feet. Not stationary stuff. There's no time that a goalie comes out of the net and doesn't move. They have to be able to move their feet, handle the puck. Great little drills, keep away drills, anything like that, to, just to get them moving and handling that puck, reinforcing that bridge. Do you want questions as we go? Or? Uh, we're, well, after this one, we'll, we'll go into questions. You guys are going to see there's going to be a, an appropriate time, and I'll probably give you guys uh, one. So we had that drill on the back of our uh, pages, actually. And like I say, this is available on YouTube if you want to go back and see exactly what the demo was. There's a drill from the back of the pamphlet that gave you. And it's always the same thing. Strong push and stop. Strong push and stop. Always looking first. Upper body almost does not move. Nothing complicated, it's just working with these guys. Control that upper body, not be all over the place.
talk to your goal brain exactly. <coughs> exactly, right? And then, and then we're going to talk about how you guys can incorporate your goalies in practice uh, right afterwards. How to properly use your goalies in practice. We'll refer to this video a little bit, that's why I wanted to show it before. But pucks are always a good, uh, just to see, to position yourself, because we're often telling the guys to find the stick late, find the puck, track the puck, <coughs> give them a visual, give them a target to get up to. It's easier to tell a junior guy to imagine this stuff, but at a novice level or atom level, it's about visual, reading the rest. Same way Andre is moving with the shooter, it's almost the same way he's doing the drills. Just a strong push and always stop. And I'm stopping because I'm in control. I can move left to right after that. It's not always sliding. There's no way to control that. Golden rule, beat that pass every time. That was my speech tonight. The, my goalie before his game in Valdor. I don't know if it worked. What your videos are listed under on YouTube? Uh, there's some. I'm going to give you the links. Now, what happened a few years back is that uh, I wasn't organized and I did, so I switched to uh, YouTube group, but you can find most of the stuff. And I'll leave you guys a link uh, afterwards. Now, a couple of things that are huge for me is to look and rotate and push. Okay? I always think that moving without purpose is, is useless. You're going to see some goalies that are, they've just made a save. <coughs> Maybe there's a pass going and it's, it's, oh, this is where I was going. So we really try to enforce that I look, rotate my upper body, and then I'm square where I need to go. Push, and the stop part is huge. You get guys that keep moving their feet and that shot's going this way, good luck. It's gonna end up trying to reach. So it's enforcing look, rotate, push, and stop. Whatever it is, if it's a pass out of the corner, look. Everybody know what we're looking for? What should the goalie be looking for? Where's the pass going? Shooter. Shooter. So I'm a, uh, let's say I'm a left, you got the right answer. I'm a left shot, oh, maybe I'm a right. Huge difference here, right? We're talking about almost four feet difference between a right and a left and a shooter. So as the levels go up, it's tough to tell a novice kid, okay, make sure you take a look if the guy's right or left handed. But it is huge when moving. If the kid is always moving to the center of the player, he's about almost two feet out of the angle. And that's what wasn't told me when I was young. Uh, it would have made a difference, I would have been a pro for sure. Uh, but uh, it's huge. Proper leg recovery. And these are fundamental things that I say that we have to keep reinforcing. Even at the, I see my goalies in the queue get up with the wrong leg, it's big, you know. And with the younger kids, it has to be, it's almost muscle memory, we have to start at a young age. The way I try to explain it when I'm on the ice is if I'm going this way, Say I've just made my save. I try to, with kids I find you have to be black and white. You have to make it really uh, resonate to them. So I go, okay, if I'm going this way and I get up one, 
two, three. And then I said, okay, this time I'm going to get up with the opposite leg and push at the same time. One, and I'm there. So what's faster? Oh, one is faster than one, two, three. Uh, that's one easy way to teach proper leg recovery and why they're doing it. When I was young, I was always told to do things. Um, do this, get up with that leg, Dave. Well, why or why? Well, it's faster. Well, that's easy to tell me, but I needed a concrete way to you know, process this. And I find with the younger kids, if, if we can find easy <coughs> technology for them, uh, it's fine. Stick use, huge. Control rebounds, you can do anything. It's just follow it in, put it in the corner. Not too many goals happen from the corner of the ice, right? Safest zone. So if a young goalie is letting out rebounds in front, if you let any goals in from the corner, they'll tell you, yeah, once, or something like that. Well, okay, how many have you let in from a rebound in the, in the slot? Well, many, so where's the safe zone? Instead of saying, keep your rebounds in the corner, or control your rebounds, it's, it's why. And even at that young level, they're able to understand that. Um, I forgot to put it here, but rotation. And we're gonna watch a little video upper body. This is my, uh, one of my goalies for the Teton. He played two games last night. He's playing with the Woodstock Slammers right now. He didn't have a really good training camp, but he played pretty good the last two games. We talked about upper body rotation. I put that image there because his rotation is one thing that he has to work with. Uh, let's say the puck is right over here. You can see where his shoulders are. They are not square. So that goes back to me saying at the start, look, rotate, push, and stop. He brings that glove. He's now square. So instead of Antoine reaching for things, he's got to bring his upper body, and then he's going to get that extension. But if I'm here, that's as far as my arm's going. As soon as I move my upper body, I've got that new angle. So important. Look, rotate, push, and it's in everything. Butterfly, slide, etc. Post play. Can you teach a midget goalie the same technique as a novice goalie? Really? Probably not, right? It's tough. Uh, unless you have Logan Steves, uh, who's a little bit bigger than everybody else. Because uh, I had Jared and Logan out on Sunday. And Jared's a little bit smaller than Logan. So trying to tell Logan I could almost get into stuff that I was teaching at the midget level compared to Jared, where you're going to have to get up a little bit quicker, get up on your feet. And we'll look at the technique side. But that's just to put in your head that, you know, uh, I'm different than Andy in size. Right? I'm lucky at the queue, I've got two guys that are six foot two, exact same height. Um, but sometimes you'll have a five foot eleven goalie and you'll have a six foot two, or you'll have a four foot goalie and you'll have a four foot and a half. They're all different humans. They have different arms. They, some guys will hold their gloves a little bit higher. Some guys a little bit lower. Remember that uh, you don't want to be told too much. You don't want to work on stance too much like that. As long as it's just you see your gloves, feel that comfortable position. You know, Ben Scrivens holds it like this. Good for you. I, you know. I'm not going to ever tell anybody to do that, but if they are comfortable, we want these guys to make the saves. You know, some of the craziest goalies we've seen are probably the ugliest in the net. They got the job done. So I went away from trying to tell people this is the concise way. Just give them uh, points that they can easily follow. So gloves out, look, rotate, push. Now the upper body video. We're going to see if we can get this here. How many guys have iPads here? You? Can be your new best friend. Uh, even iPhones. Even any phone. I shouldn't say it has to be an i uh, program. I had a. Uh, I went out with an Adam Double A team uh, on Thursday night at a DM. Two goalies, Gibbs, Adam Double A. I don't know what's going on with Gibbs, but their goalies, it's, there's a lot of them, but it, it's tough. Uh, this is a new thing. We can't do it here in our morning. I had to bring out two pairs of gloves because, you know, kids without gloves is probably not too safe. Uh, but what they do, I found I went, okay. Like I used medicine balls this year at some point just to try to get the upper body. 
Because I have a 17 year old Quebecer who's always down like this. So I need to get his upper body up for him to use that size. And it's the same thing with your small kids. You're going to have some that are falling all the way forwards or falling on their butts. How do we keep those shoulders high and nice? Great way to do that, find an old pair of gloves, cut a hockey stick. You're going to see in this video what they do. Uh, And I found the corrected things just like this. I did it last Sunday at our Vita M clinics too. I made a little station on the side. They were forced that if they were gonna move, it was the upper body first, and then once that kid wanted to swing like this and get up, because he had the stick, he'd, feel, he'd be able to correct himself. Just because, oh, I'm pulling this way, but I need to push into that and it came into the butterfly slides. Like I saw an improvement, I'm serious, I'm gonna do this from now on after I, I should email this guy and tell him I'm stealing it, but it's a great idea just to correct that upper body. So when we talk about look, rotate, push, get him a stick, <coughs> and the, they don't even have to be in the net. You know, ask the coach for five minutes. My Q goalie does this for five minutes. I put a 10 pound weight in the middle of the stick just because at, at that level, just to get that upper body, but it's, it's rotate, and they push into these things. They're square the whole time. So this is a great, great tool. Find an old stick, some gloves, bring your goalies, and within 10 minutes you'll see a difference. And they can, and even if you have a little bit of trouble, like I was grabbing the stick at one point, really telling them, okay, bring your shoulders this way, or bring it the other way. But I found this a cool way. This guy does it, he'll do it a whole hour with about seven stations that are just this stuff and you can see like a kid in white where the shoulders weren't going first. I'm going to slow it down a little bit. You know. talk a little bit. We'll talk a little bit of this app which is uh, my new best friend. Um, so when we're looking at it, right, we talk about the shoulders. First thing is the head. Now you see where this guy, the kid in red where his arms are, right? You'd have to think that that pass was made. There's probably a stick blade. Let's say it's a right hand shot. He's got to get those shoulders square before he moves. It's not totally there for me. And as he gets up, it's still a little bit tough, but he's doing this for a reason, because they're not there yet. Um, let's see if the other guy's a little bit better here. Oh, this guy's a little bit better. So first thing he does, the shoulders, he's pretty square the whole time in the slide. Let's see what he does when he gets back. See how he gets back up instead of bringing that stick, bringing those shoulders? All about being square. And that's something I think if we teach these kids at a younger level, it can make a huge difference. I'm square to the puck instead of having, uh, I'm ready to make that save. So, we'll return to that app a little further, because uh, it will be your new best friend. It will cost you a little bit of money, but I guarantee you. We we'll probably use it for if you guys have players. I know we use it for our skating with our defensemen. We had guys that couldn't stride. We use it there for uh, replays also. It's called Coach's Eye if anybody wants to write that down. Um, we'll look a little bit further later on and what utilities you have from it. Okay, running effective practices. Precious practice time. You guys only have an hour. Right, most, I don't think anybody has longer practice times than an hour. Am I right? Keep goaltenders development in mind. It's not just, okay, these guys are just pylons in the net. You have to treat them, okay, as goalies, as somebody who might save you the game. Uh, you know, at our level right now, our guy's not saving us too many games. Uh, he might be costing us some games. So discussion point every night in the dressing room. You can be your best friend, you can be your, your worst enemy in our case. Uh, set your goalies up for success. Maybe the drills are not all over the place. We're going to talk about that right now. Team warm up. Skating. Always <coughs> include your goalies. Okay? I, mean, and I, I heard that 10 years ago, and then, uh, no, instead they were, you know, they were maybe doing a warm up where one guy was taking shots on them for five minutes. Get them skating, I'm telling you. They have to be able to move to be able to make that safe. Allow time for goalie specific movements. So little drills you got in the back, they're not 
too hard. I'm going to give you other resources. Hockey USA has a great website with simple drills. They even have an app that I'll show you guys. It's amazing. And when designing drills, evaluate your goalie. Hey, what, what are his needs? Because if you're trying to do everything at once, it just won't succeed. Oh, this guy lets in rebounds. Okay. Yeah, but he can't even get in position to make that first save in a controlled manner. So scale it down. Really have a discussion maybe with your coaching staff. Well, you know, I'm seeing these things. Take a little bit of a pull. Warm-up drills, varied shots, high shots. That first drill, it's not, you know, hit the goalie in the pads. I, I've heard that one, and I, I know uh, my employer says it often, but maybe instead, hey, a couple of high shots, a couple of low shots, get them enough time to be able to control their tempo, okay? Give them time to get up, right? I, I see the drills sometimes, there's, even my cue coach, I said, whoa, 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 I had to stop on the drills because my goalie was making a save, and by that time, the other guy was here, and that's not realistic. Right? You have to give these guys time to get up, be controlled. We're trying to teach these kids to get up, look, rotate, and push. We're not giving them time, and then they get over there, and it's not a control. <coughs> Class-based drills and repetition. I like to more go with game situations sometimes. Don't be scared to put those in. Hey, that last goal, you know, you know, this one killed us. We had two goals like that. Create a drill in that way. Just making it for a 10-minute drill just for the goalies. It will go a long way. Person versus target, and it's often said um, they are your goalie, they're not just there to stop pucks. I, I could go on, but I'll get angry, so I won't. <coughs> uh, realistic expectations, confidence. Uh, you know, I'll give you a little story on the side note. Uh, this year we had a new coach of the Titans. We brought in our 20 year old goalie and we said, Jake, this is our expectations for this year. We want a 9 10 save percentage, and I think he gave him uh, goals against around two. Right now he's at 4.1, and it goes against, and his save percentage is at 860. The guy comes to the rink, and it's just, that mountain is so high for him right now, and it's ridiculous. So we've had, as a coaching staff, talked and said, you know, and we go back to that first day where we challenged this guy, and from there it's just been, couldn't handle the pressure, there was so much expectation. Sometimes it's not what you guys see, it's coming from, you know, mom and dad maybe in the car ride too. Uh, it's to take a step back and say, okay, you know, I try to tell my goalies, give us a chance to win. Give us a chance to win the period. I break it down to periods. Because I, I look at the game, maybe a guy's going to get 16 shots in one period. Yeah, you let in two goals, but you know what? You gave us a chance to win. There was two of those breakaways that, that were huge. Uh, or you get three shots and it's not busy, things like that. But find a way to break down your periods and really give them a, a good confidence builder. Pre-game prep, I started at A levels. Um, Phantom AAA, I had Gary Hines come back and go, he's never ready for the game, never ready. Well, I talked to the goalie, I said, what do you do before your game? He said, well, I just, you know, I hang out in the room and I don't do too much. And I said, well, one of my coaches when I, when I was young said, uh, visual, visual, oh, no, no, station. I'm francophone, sorry, folks. Um, I take a puck. Tell them to sit down for a couple of minutes and visualize about 30 saves in your head. I feel pretty good after I've made 30 saves in a game. And it's the same thing for the kids. It's seeing yourself in your gear. Okay, you've got your Reebok pads with red lines, white. Who are you playing? Okay, you're playing uh, Moncton today. Okay, they got their white jerseys, the Devils. See all that stuff. What rink are you playing in? See those saves. They're probably going to happen in the game, but they have to be 30 situations. And I mean at the atom level, you can start that. Tell yourself, hey, make some good saves. See yourself controlled. Not these crazy saves that you wouldn't make in a game, but everything, just that shot coming. What did you do after the shot? Uh, tennis ball is also a great thing, right? It's a good way to build a partnership between two goalies. Uh, my university girls, every game, they just get in the hallway and it's going, they're just throwing balls. Nothing too complicated. And then they separate and go do whoever's a starter or go do a visualization. Uh, at the Quebec Major Junior level is different. These guys have a routine. They do add, they get their pregame. But there's not too much room for us to be able to develop a pregame routine. But it's definitely important. We'll give you a couple of resources you guys can read up on that. Uh, routine importance is more. When should your pregame uh, kind of uh, start? Anybody know? Like if I have a game, it's a game day today. When should I start thinking about my game? What would you tell the uh, Pee Wee goal? How long? Should he start maybe with his meal in the morning and all that? Right, about two hours before, that's the maximum. It's, 
you know, a kid who's the whole day just stressing out about, okay, tonight I'm playing that game, I'm playing that game, gets to the rink and it's, you know, enjoy your normal day. Two hours before, start to think, okay, you know what, after my meal, okay, I got a big game tonight. Stress is less there. We, we had a guy at the university level who was, I do this, I take my nap, I do all this, and the pro level is different. They're doing this as a job. I think there's still kids here. Uh, and some of these kids, you might not see it, but it, it starts at home at 7 a.m. and comes about the game tonight. So, still a game yourself, enjoy it. Uh, Free game warm up on ice. Stick safe, post play, and movements. Whatever else you guys want to do in your free, and I know. What is it, roughly three minutes, uh, minor hockey? Like your band to play, we have a little bit longer. Uh, but in a three-minute three warm-up, I'd say, okay, as soon as you get out there, yeah, instead of skating for five minutes in a circle, okay, get out there, do a couple of these drills that we've shown you on the back. They don't even need pucks. A couple of deep pushes, a couple of shuffles, a couple of butterfly slides, get in the net, do your drills with your team. But try to have the focus on, okay, shooters, a couple of low shots, a couple of high shots, not just the shooter is a warm-up. Those guys are going to try to score. I don't think you wanted your goalie letting uh, you know about 30 goals before you start your game. It doesn't usually work for us too well. Post play is also important. 70% of the 70% uh, of the chances are coming from behind the net and along the walls. Yeah, most of the goals are scored in front, but something happened before the puck got there, and I started with a pass behind the net. So get these kids just to get in the post just a couple of times. You because it's going to happen, and those killer goals that come in in a wraparound are the ones that just put the team, for the most part. So how did we not get that one in the post? Get them to do that in the warm-up. Any questions on practice or uh, anything like that? What's your yeah. thoughts on uh, goaltenders wanting to stretch during the warm-up? Like, I've, I've seen both. Some come out and want to skate around. Some have it in their mind. they got to stretch and all that. Try to do it in the room. Yeah. Or do it just on the outside. There's some of this stuff, obviously, it's a lot easier to stretch my groin on the ice because it slides compared to the carpet, but you can do it in different ways. Yeah. I think at your guys' level, when you have a three minute warm up, you're wasting 30 seconds right there, right? Um, we do it, if I'm doing a goalie clinic, that's different. I've got an hour. You know, I can take that. Usually, when I do a stretch, it's my time to talk to the kids, right? But at, at your pre games, uh, I wouldn't do it. Practice, a little bit different. Once again, you have the hour. Uh, if they can do it in the room, they do it. If it's a practice, I don't mind. Uh, but definitely game warm up. Try to use up that time. If you're at the band AAA level or the high school level where you have 15 minutes, you know, it's a whole different ball game. But I think for you guys at the minor hockey level, try to do it in the room. Uh, and there's plenty of stuff you can do. So the, the three minutes you're getting warmed yeah. up, uh, we usually run the kids with two or three laps around just yeah. to get the blood going. Do you do that with the goaltenders as That's well? That's where I tell the guy, okay, maybe one lap, yeah. get on the side where the red line is or something, and start doing you know, simple patterns. And they're on the back of, uh, like on the back there, there are some really simple things. And you don't need a crease to be able to do that. It's just start from the middle, three C pushes or three C cuts, right? Just goalie specific things. and those, those movements on the back of the page are just that's all they can need to do. They find an area on the ice and it comes back to just a little bit of imagination. Tell them imagine your shots coming in. Imagine it's that Moncton guy. You know who the best player on that team is? Just refer to him just to motivate him a little bit. Uh, but I would try to not waste as much time as possible. And it's tough to try to get these kids to, you know, maybe it's not uh, their routine, maybe it's somebody else's uh, who's either driving into the rink or not uh, their routine. Anything else on uh, pre-game or anything like that? I don't want to monopolize, but yeah. a lot of the teams have two goaltenders. Yep. So if you play, a lot of us tend to play our goaltenders half games. Okay. Um, so how do you warm those up? Kind of dealt with half games. <laughs> um, that's a tough one. If you're doing half games, I, it's almost a mirror. I think it would have to be a mirror. Maybe one guy on one side of the ice, one guy on the other. It's the same thing. You divide the net time. Talking three minutes is it's tough to warm up two guys. Um, I know we used to do it when I used to play with the three minute warm ups or the five minute warm ups. The other guy would, whoever's the backup would be taken on the side and take those shots. I think that's a great idea to still do that. Whoever's not playing that game, take a player, bring him on the side. Uh, let the other guy really have that net time. 
Uh, but if you're playing half and half, don't just do it for one guy and not the other. I think it's, I tell the other guy, when he's waiting, he's not good in the net, hey, do something, stay busy. Same way when we do goalie clinics, we try to emphasize these kids, instead of waiting there, sitting on your butt, do something. But it's tough to always babysit them and get them to tell their game. That's why we bring out sticks and gloves. Oh, this is interesting, it's new. They're kids, we have to try to keep them engaged and involved. Um, that's a, that's a tough game, a half goalie situation. What about uh, when you're doing the pre-game speech? Yeah. Can the goalies be out the hallway throwing that ball around, or should they be in there? The first thing. There's no way, uh, especially you. <laughs> no, they're part of that team, and a lot of these guys, uh, most of the goalies that are going to make it to a level are going to be leaders for the most part. They're either turned on or, or, you know, I, I had a talk, and we played the Sea Dogs, and we stumped the first period, and I went up to Jake, and I said, I said, Jake, do you get up in the room and get rattled? And he said, no, I did that last year, and it didn't work. I said, okay. So I said, you're, you're not a leader on the ice. You don't communicate. So, you know, what makes you special? I think a goalie is a quarterback. Uh, we're the only person watching the whole game from the back of the back of the ice. I'm seeing everything. I can communicate to my D that there's somebody coming on. It doesn't have to be the coach every time. Uh, so I think it's important that they're in there for the pregame speech for sure. Um, even if you're having meetings like uh, with your PK, for some of you guys in the provincial PK or power play meetings or more PK, bring the goalie out to that meeting. Not to, okay, well, six guys that are playing power at PK or the ten guys. Bring the goalie in, explain what's going on at the penalty kill. Uh, last night against Mount A, we, we had nine, there were nine girls in the room. Get the goalie in here. She needs to know what's going on too. Do not seclude them. I think they're a huge part of your team. That's a good question. Go ahead. Just on free, on practice wise, uh, free game. A couple of resources if you want to write these down. Hockey Canada. They're, I find them behind, but I'll still mention them. They were trying to do a goalie symposium at one point this year where they brought 10 guys into Hockey Canada and they were going to you know, roll out that everybody was going to do the same thing. And then the guy got a job with the Carolina Hurricanes and that just went out the window. Uh, so they're back at square one. There's nothing being rolled out, which is unfortunate. I think it would have made a huge difference that everybody get on that same page. Uh, because there's some guys that are trying to just do something different so they can say that they're doing something different. Uh, I think it still comes down to we're still trying to protect the net. There's different techniques, uh, but I believe in teaching different techniques at different age. I cannot teach, you know, the novice goalie to, if the puck is in the corner, to already be down on their post. Yeah, I can tell them to be down on their post, but when, when the puck is in the air, um, where I have six foot two guys, they can be down on their post at any point, they're covering that net. So it, it comes into to effect when you're teaching, you know, post play is a huge thing I find at the younger levels. We did a clinic in Halifax, and I got a breakaway, always coming. He was just trying to steal the post. He said, every time I'm going to get it over your shoulder, I said, I need to play against you once in a game for my next game to tell my players, get on the breakaway, because that guy does this every time. And I think some of these kids, because they're doing the drills at clinics, it's always, I'm just going down. So the smaller they are, I think we have to adjust. Don't teach them the same way you see the NHL goalies doing it. Really look at the specific stuff. And Hockey Canada is good for that because they always, in their videos, and I had a couple of, uh, actually, demos of the website, what it looks like. So Hockey Canada, all, like, they'll have player development goaltending. There is over 160 video clips of every situation you could think of. Uh, skating, you drills, everything for every level, for the advanced goalie, for the beginner goalie, it's all out there. We use an older kid and a younger kid, right? Just on there, they're talking about the depth. You can see the small kid is top crease. He's almost in the white, and the girl is almost back on our goal line. Um, so it, that's where I mean it's a whole different game at whatever size you are. Uh, don't get it planned into one thing. Uh, I also talked about the Coaches I app, which is the one I have uh, on my computer. And their website, this Coach's Eye website, is amazing. I'm getting a lot of drills from there. <coughs> I'll visit it uh, probably on a weekly basis. Hopefully the internet plays ball with us here. But there's a lot of research in becoming a goalie coach. You know, don't tell your boss you're doing this at any point. Um, if you 
scroll down on this page, there is latest. And if I go into it, I'm finding a lot of European videos and just people that are doing things different. It doesn't mean I'm going to implement that with my goalies, but I'm going to find, you know, this rare drill open, and then this guy has 30 videos. It's almost like a, a hidden YouTube of people doing drills or coaching-wise because the app is, is so great. I'm going to talk about it in a minute. Uh, how to review stuff. You can use it with players too, even on your teams. Uh, if it's to work systems and things like that, it's just the way it, it works out for you. Uh, Hockey USA. This is the best one. Uh, Hockey Canada doesn't have a uh, Hockey Canada goaltending website.com. Uh, USAHockeyGoaltending.com. It's amazing. Uh, the drills are there, the videos are there, and it's really for drills. Fundamental, game situation drills, team drills, off ice. I'm using the off ice drills from this website with my golden in the queue. Uh, there's a great app. I'll transfer the uh, iPad after. It does cost about $10 to get all the videos on there, but it's just handy for me. I always have this wherever I am. Uh, the resources on it are, are amazing, and they come with videos. everything 10 times better I find than Hockey Canada. They even talk about equipment. Uh, so this one is a keeper for sure. Uh, team practice, I don't know how many of you guys know about Coach Nielsen. Uh, this thing is uh, it's reliable for any coach, even if you're players. Uh, it's just a bank of different coaches that just send their stuff. Like they put contributors there, no train drills from NHL guys from University of Hockey, and they're just free. So if I go on the goaltending side, three shot warm up, etc. Dennis uh, hand goalie training videos. There, and you'll find team training videos. How to incorporate your goalies in there? There are so many places online that it does not cost you money that you don't have to spend. You just have to spend a little bit of time researching. But this one for any hockey coach, even for players, uh, it's an amazing one. It's just got banks and banks and banks. So what happens when you have a situation where you've got different techniques? So like I was looking at you know, and I was talking today, I was looking at Connecticut website, University of Connecticut or something like that. And their their idea on goalies and the puck behind the net is very different than yeah. than what the puck is as well. They're still in the mode of stand up, hold the post, you know, your gloves gotta protect your knee at that point it's not gonna keep by and then you've got the pass that's front protected, you've got and then so your heel stays back on the line until the player comes around and you bring your heel back in, go back in forth. So they're not sliding back and forth because again, the kids that like Logan's a big kid, backside push is no problem at all. It's just there and they need to care as well. We're gonna decipher one of those and go right into it. One thing uh, my mentor Louis Gay has always said is follow it in the corner, and once it's safe, then get up. So I think if that puck is in that corner, it's safe, but not if there's a player, let's say there's a, an opposing player here and another one here, well, maybe that's a situation where I'm going to stay down. But when it's, in, when it's safe, get up. Okay, so for Adam Lowell. Yeah, I'm going to show you a kind of Adam Lowell here. I'll uh, use a moment in Adam Double A. I did try to do some of these advanced drills uh, with the kids on Sunday, and it was it was pretty good. I did them with all my uh, I did them with all my goaltenders, and I'll show you. We'll, we'll kind of go backwards here. You're gonna hear me for sure here. So I just 
where to my phone. Totally. It's an early morning. We did this drill now. You're going to see. You're going to start at the Quebec level, then we'll go right down to an atom to an obvious holding doing the same drill. It was new gear day, dude. We were pretty pumped. With these guys that are six foot two, they almost do not have to move. And the biggest thing is that they just seal, let the puck hit them. There's no reason to open up. That's what I'm going to let that go. Well, so that was at the Q level, I'm doing it with these guys. Now I'm going to show you. We'll go down a little bit. Uh, we'll take uh, Mr. Lucas Burroughs. We did the same thing, we had a deflection board out there. Okay, we're going to talk about a couple of things here. The luxury of this app, you can really just, I can back, I can stop at any time and really just play around with it. So one of the things here, what do we notice? We talked about upper body at one point, not quite sure. Just, it, you know, it's having those gloves, it's a, it's a huge part of, of anything. If I'm going, and this is a technique where you're going to see, if you want those goalies to make those rebounds, it's going to be the backside push. Um, in French, they call it pick. Uh, there's a power push. There's, you're going to see that there's guys that use different terms. Try to decipher that. It's just, you can name it whatever you want. Uh, let's say I just made a, there's a rebound. It's my mouse. I don't know if you can see me if I'm here. I just made a save. My rebound is here now. Some of the goalies are gonna just stick it out my leg like this. And then after the shot, I end up on my butt. Okay, and then I'm a dead whale. Or they do this and then they fall on their stomach. So it's all about balance. And we talked about the shoulders and that comes back into that stick. You can do almost all this stuff with that stick in their hands and it's really just doing the movement and controlling my upper body. So if that's my puck, First thing I need to do was what? What did I say earlier? Well, well, well. I'm looking at my puck. Rotate my shoulders. Now, if my glove is back here, if you remember that video, that image from Antoine, where he was going to make that save, <coughs> and it was back here. I'm only able to get, if that shot was coming in, this is the farthest I can extend from that angle that's coming where the puck is. Now, as soon as I move my upper body, whoop, I've already got that angle, and I can even extend further into that shot compared to when I'm like this. So it's look, rotate, and keeping that glove, it's not only for looks, it's for balance. If the goalie has his pad, his gloves down on the pad and he's trying to push, where do you think that shoulder is gonna go? Right down on the ice, yes. right? Same thing on the other side, it's even more prevalent. If the glove is down on the pad and they're trying to push, shoulder's going down. So we say glove, hit the gloves up, it's for the balance. Net coverage too, but it's a huge part of the balance. The weight on the stick, lift, and then I can make my move and finish square. So with Lucas, the only thing I would tell him, maybe get the glove a little bit more, there's no need to really have it that low. And with the new reverse, they call these a reverse VH, because the VH used to be a one leg up on the pad. A reverse VH, the important thing is to seal that bottom part of the net. And Lucas is, I, I'm not really sure what's going on. We're going to talk about it after with Lucas, uh, what, where the stick was. All I want is that that shoulder seals that post. Probably the thing, though. He's throwing himself yeah, out. Yeah, you're going to see where we correct it. He's going to do quite a, quite a lot better here. And then, on the second shot, the puck is going over here. Rotation is pretty good with the upper body is first. Now see where the glove is? And that affects when he's going to try to push. But a good stick. Jump in here. Fast forward so we don't have to hear him too much. See how I, I, those shoulders are coming right into that angle. Told him that we could bring the stick up just a little bit, but it's really the shoulder just finding the post. And that was the idea. 
ideal for Lucas was really the seal, right? Because there's a little bit of holes all over the place. And that's why I'll break. And then for that second save, my upper body is going to be ready to go and sit in there. I'm all crooked and there's a lot more movement going on. Good job here. The only thing was with the glove, just when it's going to come, if that flat puck was to come out, because we're doing a seal on the post here, if the puck comes out, that's where that upper body needs to be. And the, the more you're loose, the more you have to bring up and do more movements in the next save. starts on the bottom of the ice. So if you can have a good seal going on here. And with that age group, how many kids are going to get in the upper part of that net? That's the other thing. So I, I kind of try to play the factors because I know these guys, they've been with us for a little, a, a long, you know, I say long, two years or three years. And it's coming. But if he uses, keeps that shoulder up and just lets it hit him. Don't open up. Don't do anything. Be fine. And a good push in there, good active stick. Okay. Oh, that's enough, Andy. I won't do any more. Okay. Yeah. Um, I don't mind doing a little bit of this analyzing. Uh, we'll find a couple other kids here just to show you. A uh, couple of good drills here. If you want stick work. Uh, I do this one just to save my puck so I don't have to run around the whole time. Uh, and if you have the luxury of having uh, an extra net on the ice, uh, you can do it. And this is what the coach told me. Okay, Dave, you got the center of the ice, okay? Uh, I use my mind here. Put two nets against, shots in the middle, and stick use. 
And the important thing with Emily here is that she has to follow the puck in. It's a huge thing with goalies. Not just staring here. Follow the puck in, follow the puck out. Puts in the corner, puts in the corner. I want to go back here. One of the things that we've also changed a little bit is the way that before we would tell kids to buy a goalie stick here, it was put it out here. Now we're telling them bring it in and flick the wrist. And Emily's going to do exactly that. That puck is coming in. All she's got to do is flick the wrist, that puck's in the corner. The same thing for the other side. So we've, we've kind of went away from that one because I've seen guys miss the puck and try to do this and it goes right in. Instead, they're following it in, which makes them be square, and then just a little flick of the wrist. Olivier well, is a pretty good, uh, so he's adding double A out of Bakdouche. Now, that was great. That was exactly uh, what happens when they freak out and they don't rotate. And this is the coaches I have, by the way, guys. It's, uh, it's just, I use it. <laughs> yeah, this is all through this. Now, I had a tripod, and my assistant coach took a shot and broke it uh, on Monday morning, so um, it doesn't work anymore. But I do have I bought a tripod. It maybe cost me about 129 bucks for the tripod and the mount. But you can use your phone. You can do the same thing. Use your iPhone, do the video, do your corrections after. And the luxury of this is that after I've done a video, I can send it to email, or I can, and it's very, like in our rink in the queue, where the luxury is we have the Wi-Fi built in here, and if you remember, you can probably do the same thing. After I've done it, I can do a, I can do a share. And it does this thing. I can plug it right into an email and send any of you guys an email. As soon as you're done practice, you go in there and, oh, geez, I can check out my video. Or if you wanted to correct, and a lot of these guys, like the NHL, they go, okay, hi, Kerry, I just uh, watching your practice, you know, you should have did this. And I can re-record, I can watch it again, I can make it access to anybody. Um, you can show them how to, it's, it's really cool, all these things. Yeah, I'm gonna, we're gonna, they should pay me to market this thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's only $4.99, now I'm paying the subscription monthly because I use it religiously and I wanted the more, the more output HD. That's the only thing you won't get by doing it the other way. I know we're running out of time, but we'll keep going here. Right. Just to watch what you did. Now, this is a drill I do for rotation and some of the kids, so my first puck is here, and then they have to get to that second one now. If the goalie pushes on this straight line, that angle that we've talked about, that's the only part that they have to cover. So if they can go a little bit deeper and really get my angle, that's what we want to enforce here. Now, first thing ODB tries to load instead of doing what? If you were to rotate it there, and you're going to see the second time you're going to do it much better. Because then his stick was behind, everything was behind. And it's, it's even tough. When I did this with my Q guys for the first time, I was getting the same results. So I was backtrack, start it slower, and then increase your speed. Uh, but some of these drills are excellent to do. Let's see what happens here. Well, my app is working great tonight, guys. It's a great night for this. I'd love to show you ODB. We're going to try it one more time here. I'm not going to pause it. Is a, is a, do we call it a butterfly slide? It's a backside push, is what it's called. Okay. 
And this is how I, I first teach it. So I put three pucks. I number them one, two, three on the ice. The goal is going to one, then two, then three. Uh, this is uh, Nico's 2007. And that's where he's got to be able to rotate that upper body. It's not really speed that we're looking for too much. It's really the rotation that we're trying to teach at this level. They can get it proper. See how he's got the glove on the pad? And that's where his balance. If he wants to make that glove say coming back there, it's going to be tougher. There he's pretty good. That's all right. He's doing something. I like it. Hey, he's shooting the puck. It's fine. It's fine. Um, I'll show you a couple of uh, that same drill being done by the older guys. He's pretty good. He's small, so he'll be perfectly challenged. He moves into the shots, follows his rebounds. That's the biggest thing for me. But he's got that grasp. He's not reaching with only one thing. It's the upper body that's moving into it every time. Look, rotate, push. He's almost square all the time. Oh. That's how it is. So in your practices this week, concentrate on the small 
things, if your goalie is it's all over the place, start with the upper body. Start with the gloves. And it's just simple. Feel the elbows. That's a tip that I try to give them. Right? Feel the elbows and hold at a comfy spot. Doesn't have to be up here, doesn't have to be down there. Where your arms bend. Uh, pressure on the stick is a huge thing too. Uh, my goalie coach when I was young would go around and lift my stick. My first year at Adams, I'm sure my wrist was just in complete pain because then I was able to lead with my stick all the time. <laughs> but then we've, we've moved, uh, moved over to leading with the gloves, well that incorporates your stick too. But that pressure on that stick is going to make a huge difference and that's just going around practice once in a while and they're in their stance and lift the stick. Oh, geez. The thing flies up, well, you know, good luck making that stick save on the next one. Uh, proper way to hold your stick, you got a couple of guys, unfortunately I tell them to kind of hold their hand in a gun position. It's easy way to explain, if anybody's got another term for this position, go ahead. Uh, my thumb would go behind the paddle index on the front, my three fingers, and that way there's pressure. Why I'm not just holding a stick like this, I try to put pressure, my stick's just going to bend down. So it's all about, that's a huge thing, the first thing I correct at a clinic. And that's some of the stuff that we'll see on Friday, we're going to have to go through it with the younger ones. There's always a rep of stance, how to hold your stick, where your gloves are, um, etc. And in your practices, take some time for them. Uh, keep it simple, okay? I keep it simple at my level so it doesn't get more complicated. When I get them out and I know who they are, then I can raise the bar a little bit and challenge these kids. Um, but there's really uh, no limits or, or you don't have to go too complicated. Is there any specific questions? I know I kind of derived from what I want to do, but I just love, I could do this and review video with you guys for hours. Yep. You're at least ten, so I don't know how I... <laughs> when should they get into the butterfly? When? Ah, okay. Safe selection. Uh, high shots. And one of the drills I did the other night um, was a good one. I used both goalies. So I put one guy in front on the uh, goal line here. I put the other uh, on the top crease in his butterfly. So I had one guy down on his butterfly, and I had the other guy on the goal line standing up. Any high shot, the guy in the back had to make the save. Now when I did it with the Adam kids, I had one guy going like this, the other guy going like that. So I said, okay. I said, so you have to use your shuffle. It's the first thing. <coughs> Just move. And that drill, I loved it. I did it with my university boys as a warm up on Thursday night too. Just to get them standing up on those high shots and just moving your feet instead of every time dropping. It's going to be where your eyes are too, right? If you're not following the puck, it's going to happen to you. Uh, butterfly's projection. Now, if a shot's coming down from here, you have to remember that the puck is always going up. Depends how big your goalie is. Uh, yeah. I've seen some Adam behemoths, but uh, that's a pretty big Adam kid, though. I don't know. Wait, was he comparable to, like, maybe he's a small Adam goalie? He's a little bigger. Okay. A little bigger. And it's, uh, I'm trying to figure out how I would tell you. It's all about selection. You're really going to have to review. You guys do any video? Anybody do any video of your games at all? Yeah. yeah. And it would start with a drill like that. And you're going to see that because they're not standing up, it's that they're more comfortable in sliding into a save or something like this. And they've kind of forgot that they could stand on their feet they don't and, and make a save. Right now, they're not even sliding. They're kind of diving. Yep. Uh, yeah, there's no technique whatsoever. I had to do a video with Jake Brennan for on two on ones. In our last four games, we had six goals on two on ones. Yes, the D never cut off the pass. And same thing I told him. I don't care. But he was sliding every time before that shot was being taken. And Nathan Noel scored on us. He was about top of the circle. So you can imagine that pass was that's an easy save for a goalie because he was sliding all over the place. And I said, okay, Jake, if you T push, look, rotate, push. Oh, that shot comes the other way. You're on your feet, you are in control. If you're sliding, oh, then you have to shift your weight and everything to go in. Um, so on your feet, the key is that you're in control. That's a huge word in goaltending. Control, 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 control. If I'm on my feet, I can move in that next shot. So I suggest try that drill next practice. Um, Certainly, I'm going to leave you guys my cards and all that. There's a video of it being done uh, by guys in Finland. 
it corrected a lot for me because I, I had these two, like I say, these two Adam AA guys from DF. Um, yeah, we, we got goalies that maybe they shouldn't go down the butterfly, but instead of butterfly, they're diving at the puck. Or tell them to stand up and let the puck hit them instead of they basically dive at it. Let's move into shots is another thing, right? The guys that are always extending, they're not moving into shots. Uh, Buddy V, you saw it a couple of times just in this video. The shot's going, and he's moving into that shot instead of going down in this. So it's just trying to, and you can break it down to a simple drill. It's just, okay, uh, we're going to do a shot from the middle. I'm going to shoot towards the post. I want you every time to move into it. Okay, it's going to be high shots. Every time, you're just going to shuffle and move into it. So break down the skills instead of going, okay, you're going to, you know, you really have to break it down and make them realize you can make that save. And because you're on your feet, are you able to move the other way? Yeah, you are. So it, it's not easy. I think everybody goes through that up, down, uh, goalie, or the one that the goalie is too deep. Some guy invented like this band to put around the net so the guy wouldn't back up anymore. We were going to use a cattle prod. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, uh, but the idea is for them to stay on their feet as long as possible. <coughs> oh, and you're in control on your blades. Right. Um, your backside push, once you get up there to the other levels, You'll see even the NHL guys, uh, you know, when you have Carey Bryce, who's six foot four, has made a huge adjustment from his first years in the league, where he's on his feet almost a lot more than before. That first save is made like that. But, okay, so, yeah. but if the play is in the run of the crease, yep. you want them down? Yeah. yeah. <coughs> I have anybody who's my height for a little bit bigger, I try to tell them that the face-off dots, so if I make a, a zone here, I wish I would have brought a sharpie tonight. You have two face-off dots. I break it into a box that any time it's in that zone, you got a sharpie? That's my gray area for being down. The puck is coming down here, there's no need. I still tell my guys in the queue, don't leave and drop down. That pass is coming back up here. Oh, simple movement to the middle instead of having to shift my whole weight or to be down. Uh, I remember watching a major midget game. Miramis, she scored four goals in three minutes on Alex Collette because every time he was down here, that pass was being made and was going top shelf. Get these guys to stay on their feet. They're able to move into the other direction. So with the Adam kids, it's a little bit tougher. Maybe break that zone down a little bit more. Uh, and it's always trying to give them points. So if I'm looking at this ring, you know, hash marks and lower, I really still go with the dots. So I kind of make my zone big here. This paper is not <laughs> Beat a pass on your feet, that's how you do it. Always beat the pass on your feet. Still, it's not a fair enough crease here. There's about you know, maybe two feet in between here. So bottom of the circles, that area I'd be down. I have no problem if you're a small goalie because that puck has to get up. If you can stay close to that puck, it's not gonna, it has to start, you're creating a wall. Where Patrick Roy was famous for blocking. We've kind of, you know, players have adjusted to that. So that's why we've had to make the adjustments that where I started my spiel, where I said we can't just be like this anymore. There's still a great time to be like that. I've got a scramble in front of me. I don't want to open up. As soon as I open up, that's where probably the goal's going to happen. Create my wall and just stay there. Oh, but if that, if it's this gentleman here that shoot, oh, my gloves are active. I can respond for a save instead of having to do this. So there's a time and place, and that's where it's going to have to be a review, and you can work on it in practice. Like, I love two-on-ones in practice. I, I, I can coach the, the, I find there's so much going on because you have to judge, where is this guy? Where is the second guy? Are they coming down the lane? Where was the second guy? Did you have to slide on the first one? Can you stay on your feet and just rotate, poof, 
and if this guy made that pass and it comes back, well then you slid because then he was in that lower place, right? So it, it's two on ones I find as a goalie coach, like I, my, even my Quebec league guy doesn't do it enough. Like I, Bantam AAA, I, we made a killing with two on ones. It was just, got my guys to test herself on their rotations the same way we did in the backside pushes in the videos. Look, rotate, look, rotate, find the stick plates. I'll go more into detail. Is this guy a left or a right shot? Huge difference where I'm gonna push. Am I gonna push here or am I gonna push here? Huge difference. So there's a lot on two on ones that you can teach. You just have to break it down to where your goalie's level is. Um, I'd start with uh, depth of the other player. So where is he located? Were you able to get there on your feet? And if so, good. you can then move into that shot. If you're sliding, you cannot move into that shot. It's just not going to happen. So you're going to have to extend. So I get them to stay on their feet the most. You know, in your guys' day, you guys stayed on their feet, right? A lot. So we have to just go back to that. There's still a great time and place for butterfly slides on enclosed plays, on passes that are inside that area. There's no problem. So depth and then fine stick blades. and beat the pass. So if you know my target and you beat that pass, you are now in control, so when that shot, I can move in. <coughs> but if I'm late all the time, that's where the killer is. Um, another little tip, and like I say, that's why on Friday, if you guys are able to be there, I know it's at 12.30, but we have to find a time. PD days were a little bit easier for us to do that. Um, my big 17 year old, he wasn't beating the pass. I went, I went, Alex, you're doing a T push, and every time you're just turning your foot and you're pushing. Well, this is the extension that guy was able to get. I'm not getting a lot of power doing this, right? If I bring my foot in a little bit, then my two knees, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to push off. So with Alex, it was look as you're rotating, bring the foot in a little bit, and then this is where all that power was created push and stop. So those are little details of, on Friday, we're gonna try to hammer into her head. Uh, it's not easy. But that's how you're gonna increase the speed. <coughs> uh, any other questions or anything? I'm, I'm kind of pretty much done with what I've got here. You are talking about the back. Yeah. yeah. What's the push will come down from your post to the center? When the guy's down or if you're down? Yeah. It's all the upper body, so as soon as I, and I know they have the room close to 715, we're gonna finish up here in a second. So if my save is out front, and I hear the first thing is always my, as soon as I did this, I didn't even have, I was on my post here, and as soon as I did this, I was able to make a save here. But instead, if I, if I push like this, and then I show up, that's where I'm getting late. So it, going back to that first thing, those four things I talked about, look, rotate, push, I'm telling you, if you get this instilled in them, that upper body is going to be there. And if, if they're recovering from a save, it's look, and then I'm pushing in with my whole body instead of a swing afterwards. So we need to step up and get up. And, get and up then and I'm going to come back to where is that guy? Or is that, is that, I just made my save off the post, is my guy up here, or my guy is here? So that's why we're looking. That's why we're getting up with a purpose. We're not just getting up here and, oh, you know, I talked about that other drill where <laughs> so if you want a if you want a good one, they did it with the cone, the Quebec guys, but these guys do it here, where it's I'll say one, go to two, go to five. Now, if the kid is not looking, what number I've just said, you're gonna see them go to one and then that's where we're forcing them to take that look to know where number seven or number six is. Instead of the guy that, oh, I said a number he's already leaving, doesn't even know where he's going. That forces them to, oh, I have to find something, find a target where I was moving to. Uh, so this one's great, I go uh, off the post one, two, then I can say five, okay, butterfly to, butterfly slide to six, uh, or backside push to four, T push to seven, uh, T push to five, you're creating so many movements here. You can really tailor it to whatever you want. Um, 
and I use a big Magnum marker. Uh, they're about three dollars at the stores. Those I can write right on the ice. Uh, a guy in the queue uses a bingo, a bingo stamp. I'd never seen that. But that's what he uses uh, to write his numbers down. I don't know if it's cheap or maybe. Check it out. I don't know if the goalies want their pads to be stained red. Black usually is probably bad. Um, but this very simple drill for your next practice, and you can go from this, you can go to anything for movement. Um, and place some pucks up here, give them that visual lead. So you can work the behind the net, you can work everything here. Really. Anything else? Good, so I invite, if you guys are able to attend on Friday, or even one of your coaching staff available to attend. Uh, I think it will go far. We have some good young coaches. A uh, big thing with AGA, the uh, private company I work with, is we're trying to build leaders in your communities. So when I do go like Lakes, try to bring the guys from Maru. When I do them in Shidiac, I bring the kids from Shidiac to coach. I started at 16 years old because somebody gave me a chance. There's probably some of you guys that know midget goalies or know Bantam guys. I started when I was Bantam, I was coaching a few EAA team. I wasn't the, you know, I wasn't the king's caboose, but I was giving them more than having nobody there was. Um, and I found my passion in other things. I, you know, I didn't make it at the crazy levels in hockey, but you know, at 26, I, I feel like I, you know, I'm on the right track to fulfilling what I, I want to do. Uh, so get these guys out. You know, they're maybe your neighbor. All they need is their speak out course. Ask them, hey, can you come out once per week? Maybe it's a team that's after you. Like, I just saw these guys, it was an Adam AA practice, I think, before, or Adam A, whatever it was, the PBAA. Hey, ask one of the goalies, you want to come out? You know, anybody can do this, okay? So it's, it's on that side, it's, it's something to get them involved in. Um, so I really try to build those young leaders, and it gives them a difference, gives them a purpose, they become that they can do moral presentations like this if they want, or that they can find their passions in something else because maybe they'll end up at midget double A, but you know, they still go to the rink and help out with the band A team or get picked up like that because uh, unfortunately we don't have forty thousand dollars in our association to pay like Bedford Minor Hockey for instance, where they have a goalie coach attend every practice, but their budget is ridiculous. Um, and that's what they do in Finland, but they've started to bring these young guys, and I think you you guys are here tonight, that's your first step in trying to build that same culture. Um, luxury is I have a full-time job doing this, so if ever you guys have a call, you get, get questions, you give me a call, I'd much rather do that than to do other stuff at the office. So uh, feel free, I'll hand you guys out my card. And if there's any questions or anything, uh, just let me know. Do you want this for anything? Maybe, I don't know. Awesome. I don't know. No problem, guys. I'm going to take a couple of minutes. Question for you, Dave. Yeah. On your four positions on the back. <laughs> you got like where where are you asking to go? We're gonna go. Just, we'll go over the ball. Okay. Thanks a lot, guys. Yeah, yeah. You don't know, sure. Send me an email. Say, Dave, send me the slide. Ain't no problem. Good luck. Tuesday, Tuesday. 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 Safe ride home. Thanks again. Yeah, where are you go? Here, 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 here,